Welcome to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is Senator Mary Margaret Whipple, who happens to be the Vice Chair of the Women's Monument, the Women's Monument Commission here in Virginia. Thank you so much for being here, Mary Margaret. Well, thank you for having me. So this has been a long time in the making, hasn't it? Has it has been. And it goes been. way back, way before the groundbreaking, to the legislation that actually provided the political will and the funding to actually build this. No funding. No funding. So oh, no. All of, so let's all, start with that. Let's start with that. So the legislature said... <laughs> the legislature can, said, gave this commission the task of figuring out a good way to honor the achievements of Virginia women with a monument on the grounds of the Capitol in Richmond. So that was very exciting and it was a wonderful vote of confidence, but it did not come with any state funding. Since then, we've gotten some funding from the state, but most of the funds for this monument have been raised privately, and we're still working on still that raising part that of money. it. Uh, we've raised about three million of the three point eight million. So, was the original needed. legislation really about getting the parcel of land to build the monument on? So, the it really authorized the building of the monument on the grounds, and part of it was finding the particular location on the grounds of the Capitol. So that was perhaps the first thing we did, uh, was work with the Department of General Services, who uh, showed us several locations that would be workable and, and suitable for a monument. The one we chose is beautiful, and so I encourage everyone I to go you, to Richmond to see this. It's a prime piece of real estate in Capitol Square. It absolutely is. It's due west of the Capitol, just uh, uh, closer to 9th Street on the west side. Uh, as you walk up from the bell tower, if people are familiar with the Capitol grounds, uh, the path splits in two, and there's a triangular area. Uh, with a huge holly tree at the back that will act as a backdrop to this monument. And so this monument, as appropriate, is not your typical monument. It's not a woman on a horse with a gun or anything. <laughs> Nothing like that. <laughs> no, in fact, isn't it being called Voices from the Garden? It is. And uh, the Voices name came from the designer. And perhaps I should tell you a little bit about sure. how we chose the design because it was a very interesting process. Uh, we did an RFP, uh, sent out uh, it, nationwide and architecture and sculpture magazines and so on, and asked people to submit uh, their idea of how you could convey uh, to the public the achievements of women in Virginia. Uh, we had 30-some submissions that came from around the country, a couple of international submissions, and we assembled a group of uh, architects, artists, art historians, uh, architectural historians, uh, women's studies professors and others um, to go through the submissions and help us narrow down the list. Uh, we ended up with eight to look at uh, and interviewed those eight design teams. Uh, then we cut it down to three. Wow, what a process. <laughs> and then we asked those three to make um, models for us so that we could see in three-dimensional terms what, what the monument that they envisioned would look like. And in the end, we chose the one that people will see today. Um, what we liked about this design was that it uh, is a destination on the grounds of the Capitol. It's not a woman on a pedestal, as you right. say. We really didn't think that conveyed what we wanted to convey. Uh, it uh, works uh, in well with the, the sort of... Um, the aesthetic of the grounds. The aesthetics, of the, exactly, yeah. good phrase. And uh, it's a place where people can come and bring their lunch and have their lunch, or they can just sit on the bench. But we loved the idea of having the statues standing or seated around this plaza so that you could come up close to them. But it's to convey that they were real people. They were right. ordinary people. They're not symbolic. They're not, they represent many different walks of life, uh, many different types of accomplishments, uh, considering the different eras in which they lived. Uh, so the design 
conveys something that we think is really important, which is women are often not not on a pedestal, not sung, real. <laughs> not to told about in, in folk tale, uh, but really just real people who did some amazing things. You know, now that you think about it, we think about women in art in general. Like if you go to the great museums in, in Europe, how women are painted is very mythological. It's very mm -hmm. out of proportion with reality and how they're kind of glorified, deified. These statues are in proportion to a real human being. They're not outsized, they're not oversized. They're, the statues That's are meant right. to represent what these women would, would probably have looked like in their dress, you know? And you do have a wide variety of, of women who are being honored. You know, uh, Native American, you have African Americans, you have educators, you have physicians. I mean, there's so many women yep. who did remarkable things and from all corners of the Commonwealth. And I love the design of this too because, you know, it's kind of in an oval and as you said, it's a place to walk or sit. It's very, um, you can be very contemplative there, but around you are all these women who represent the women who worked for 400 years, or at least in the early part of 400 years, right. to get Virginia where it is today. Yes, exactly. So it, it's, I think, a very suitable and wonderful mama. I will say that before we even put out the RFP, we did have some open meetings around the Commonwealth uh, in different geographic locations to ask people what they wanted. Not on a horse was a common <laughs> Not on a horse. comment. I've got to tell you, really? <laughs> you know, and so far, I have to tell you, everywhere you go, from, you know, our own capital to the U.S. capital, the only woman who's identified as a Virginia is Pocahontas. And, I mean, I'm sure she was wonderful, but how can that truly be the only face of women in Virginia's history? You're right. I think we're going to open people's eyes to many, many more women who have done extraordinary things throughout the history of the Commonwealth. Uh, and I anticipate that a lot of little girls are going to come to this monument and say, oh, Look at that. that. I could do that. Absolutely. At least that's what we hope. And you know, and the fact that, you know, that we did have, like, uh, um, I think it was uh, Maggie Walker, who was the, oh, it started the first African-American bank, and there is a statue to her in Richmond that very recently put Correct. up to honor her. But the, the woman, hospital administrator, I mean, there were women doing very important things. I mean, things that impacted the rest of us in modern day Virginia. Correct. Those stories yeah. need to be told. And you're right, little girls need to understand. It's not just today, it's not just now. Women have been doing important, very important things throughout history. Exactly right. So I love the two, the, uh, on the oval, you're gonna have a place where other women's names will also be memorialized. Yes, so it's not just the Yes, behind one of the benches, there is a, a glass wall attached to the back of the bench, I guess you'd say. Uh, and that will have more than 200 names, additional names of women who have done things throughout, things yeah, Virginia things throughout history. Virginia. Uh, so from different parts of the state and many different uh, occup occupations, if you call them that, mm -hmm. or accomplishments, depending on what they did. Uh, and we're gonna leave some blank space on that wall for names to be added some years in the future. Right. Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of catching up to do. 200 names over 400 years, yes. So maybe give it a decade's break to figure out, looking backward, who that new generation of women are. That's right. And one of the requirements is that anyone who is named uh, has to be deceased for at least 10 years. Oh, that makes sense. So uh, that's just to make sure that their uh, accomplishments stand the test of time. That is so true. That is yeah, so true. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the groundbreaking, which was very recent when you think about it, December 4th of 2017. Correct. And Last that, December, and it was a very exciting day. <laughs> it really was. The governor uh, presided over the ceremony and spoke uh, about the importance of the, the contributions of women to Virginia history, and so that was very gratifying. We had like 700 people there. I mean, people were are very excited about this. I monument. can imagine. And it's um, the, we think the first of its kind in the nation. Really, uh, there's there are some statues of individual women in different state capitals, uh, but on the capital grounds of the state to have a monument that honors the achievements of many women is very unusual. Wow, and you have to, my hat is off to the person who designed it too. I can't imagine what all those many designs and then you narrowed it down to three and had to choose among three, but I can't imagine, because this design is so perfect. 
I yeah. think. Well, we think so too, but, <laughs> but it was a long process to make sure that we felt that we were getting something that did what we wanted it to do. And I'm sure Governor McAuliffe was thrilled to be the governor presiding over this because we talked about the fact the process started back in 2010 and it's been a long process but the groundbreaking was under his watch. Yes, so that was very nice that he and he enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm sure you can he imagine enjoyed it he enjoys thoroughly. things. And, and so the only good. other women and you pointed this out before we even went on the air is that Barbara Johns who led the walkout at Moton High School and who was one of the plaintiffs in Brown versus the Board of Education. She is also on the grounds of the Capitol, closer to the executive mansion. Correct. And I think it was Tim Kaine who presided over That's right. the dedication of that and monument. And the Kaines were very active in, in doing that, working on that monument, as, as were the Warners. And, well, many, many people. Right. It's never, <laughs> no, it's it's never a, one person. It's always a lot of people who, it's, who it's, collaborate. But Barbara Johns is the only recognizable woman on the in any of the right. monuments on the grounds of the Capitol. And all of a sudden, we're going to add 12 more. I <laughs> so know. We're well, going to almost get, get it balanced with all those male statues. I know, Mary Margaret. You may have heard, but this is the year of the woman. That's what I've, I've heard. I've heard that. You've heard that this year of the woman? I think it, we're, our timing is quite perfect. I think Virginia is holding up our end. Yes. We you are. know, we're, And, you know, and I, will, and, I will, and I will say this before we go to break, but, you know, in Virginia, it, we have only had, I think, four women in Congress representing us in all the years. Four, I believe. And we have a lot of women who are running this year. And we so, do. And so <laughs> when I think about into the future, how women will be honored in Virginia, I have my fingers crossed that we will add more than four women in Congress when we, uh, and I will just leave it at that, but I do think that Virginia has remarkable women both in our history, I think we have a lot of women in our present, and I think we'll have women that we will be uh, anxious to honor in our future. Yes, and uh, we, then we will work on getting the history books to match. Absolutely. You know, there's an ALCO, there's an ALCO in the Capitol because we've had seven presidents in Virginia. And uh, I can remember taking a tour with my children and the docent who was giving us the tour said, there's an empty alcove waiting for the next president from Virginia, whoever she may be. Oh, wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so please join us after this break. We are talking with Mary Margaret Whipple, who is the vice chair of the Women's Commission for this monument being constructed in Richmond. So join us after the break to learn more. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be.
Welcome back to Your Need to Know. I'm your host, Katherine Reed, and joining me today is Mary Margaret Whipple, who is the Vice Chair of the Women's Monument Commission here in Virginia. Thank you so much for being here, Mary Margaret. It's my pleasure. So we were talking about the design of the monument, we talked about the groundbreaking, but let's talk a little bit about these 12 women who are going to be represented within this monument. And Explain how they designed the statues, which I also think is fascinating. All right. <laughs> that is all very interesting. Well, we went, as you can imagine, I told you about quite a long process we went through to choose the design. Well, that almost paled in significance compared to choosing the 12 the women. women who would be represented by the bronze statues. Uh, and again, uh, we were greatly aided by a panel of historians and uh, gender studies professors and others who uh, pulled together a list for us to work from. They probably gave us 40 or 50 names and then they recommended 12 for uh, their top 12, their top 12. And then they said, well, you can do some switching in and out if you want to for geographic reasons or other Reasons. It's, it's a big commonwealth. It is a we and so we did add uh, one or two people from Southwest Virginia to be sure that that area was represented. I appreciate and that, Mary there, Draper. There you are. Yeah, Mary Mary Ingalls Draper. Mary Draper Ingalls rather is from Southwest Virginia and somebody that I grew up with. Right, and Laura Lou Copenhaver mm -hmm. was one of the founders of the Farm Bureau. Right, and she started a. a, a company called Rosemont Industries, which helped farm women market the things that they made. So let's say a quilt or something like that. Uh, she put them together in a, in a co-op. Yeah, cooperative. That advertised their work and got them good prices for their wares. And it was a way for women on a farm to earn cash money, which was in uh, short supply in those days. Absolutely, and it sounds like too it was like the birth of the textile industry and down in Southwest Virginia manufacturing ended up being the engine of the economy in the Commonwealth for a very long time. That's right, so uh, it was uh, very forward-looking of mm -hmm. her. It really gave a lot of meaning to the life of many people mm -hmm. and the Farm Bureau of course has been a significant force in Virginia ever since. Yes so, it has. Uh, we're pleased that she's one of the honorees and so um, we have chosen women who come from each century of Virginia's history. So starting in the 1600s. Yeah, 1600s, 17th century. Uh, so let me just tell you about the two from the 17th century. One is a woman who came to Jamestown Colony as a maid, age 15, wow. in 1608. So the se second year that uh, people came to the Jamestown Colony. And she was just a survivor. She apparently was a very good stock and good health, you right. know, because she lived through the starving time. She was the first woman married in uh, Virginia, English person married in Virginia, and had the first English child oh, born wow. in Virginia. Oh, wow. So the very first, she gave birth to the first Virginia woman or man. <laughs> well, or boy. I think it was a boy, but anyway. The first Virginian, anyway. Anyway, yeah. And so, uh, uh, that's representative of uh, the beginnings of right. the Commonwealth. And then uh, we, our Native American person who's being represented uh, in one of the statues is someone that I'd venture to guess you haven't heard of. Her name is Kokakowski. So far, I haven't found anyone who knew no, her don't before know this. About her. She was a chief of the Pamunkey in her own right in the 1600s. She united the native tribes of Virginia under her leadership and signed the Treaty of the Middle Plantation on their behalf with the British in, 16, in the 1670s. And we have her signature on the treaty. Wow. It's just such an amazing no story kidding. of a, an amazing woman that no one knows anything about. Because you think of Indian chiefs as being men, right. not women. That's right. Uh, but you found one. We found one, and it was that's one of my favorites I because it, it's just such a an interesting story and not what you're expecting to hear. Absolutely. 
But it, then you're well represented in education and in the medical field. There were women who were standouts, even despite the fact that some of them are African Americans. Right. Four of the statues are of African Americans. And uh, that was just in part because their stories really were not known. Right. And we wanted very much for people to know about the amazing things that people had done. So the African-American educator is a woman named Virginia Randolph, came from Henrico County near Richmond, uh, and developed a theory of education that combined practical work with academic learning, a sort of a learn to do by doing mm -hmm. uh, philosophy, um, and became very well known for this because it was very successful. Uh, and in all of the southeastern United States, she was invited to come and speak about her philosophy of education. And again, it's not a familiar no, household I name. I have not heard by of any most means. of these women. Uh, one of the women in the uh, 18th century was uh, Clementina Rind. Uh, she and her husband started a newspaper, uh, the Virginia Gazette. But within a, uh, within a year, he died. She maintained the business, continued to publish this paper, and then ultimately was named as the printer for the House of Burgesses for the Commonwealth of Virginia, winning a contract out uh, over other male printers. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, so again, just mm -hmm. a great, great story. Yeah, and the and the founder of your first of the first African American bank here in the That's uh, right. in the Commonwealth of Virginia, she's very interesting too. Maggie Walker, and she started St. Luke's Penny Bank in Richmond, and uh, she became quite uh, quite well known. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say maybe of uh, the at least among the African American statues, she's probably the best, the best known? known. Another was Sarah Boyd Jones, who. Uh, was the first woman and first physician to be licensed to practice medicine in Virginia. Uh, she lived in Richmond and then in the late afternoon she would have a clinic where she treated women and children for free who couldn't afford it otherwise. And that's quite remarkable when you yeah. consider that women weren't even allowed in medical schools. Right. She right? went to Howard University in the District of Columbia and that was the closest medical school. Well lucky her and lucky yeah. us to have her. Absolutely. Absolutely. So who are some of your other favorite women? So, well, I'll tell you another one that we uh, debated a bit about, uh, but we chose Martha Washington because she was the first first lady. There have been eight first ladies from Virginia, and many of them were very accomplished, and mm -hmm. we kind of lingered a bit over Dolly Madison because mm -hmm. she has a great history as well. But we finally decided the first first lady would be that makes our statue. Yeah. And she's from Northern Virginia. She is. I mean, and she and has a long history, even before she married George Washington. Her husband, her late husband, was a very wealthy landowner. And she went with George Washington to his encampments and, you know, was really yeah, she was the very first lady even before, person. even before she was in the White House. She was kind of the first lady as he was general of the Revolutionary right. War Forces. Right. So, so tell me a little bit about how you've you've gotten a lot of funding. You've done remarkably well yes, since we the, the, you've had to like raise the money yourself, and we're talking about millions of dollars, right? And you've gotten some of the statues. I think are in production. Yes. So here's where we are. Um, it looks like a total of just short of four million dollars that we need to raise, and we've raised three million. So we're on that final 800, 900,000. <laughs> oh, it's that last 800,000 that gets you every I'll time. I'll tell you, well, we're hoping, <laughs> we're, it started, uh, I mean, it's been a challenge to of raise that has. much money. Yeah. And uh, I, we've been really gratified to have support from foundations, from corporations, from banks, from individuals who have given large amounts and individuals who have given small, small amounts. amounts. And every little bit helps helps us. Uh, and now we have gotten to the point that we've been able to fund entirely the plaza, and it's under construction. We've ordered the first four statues. We have all the. It, you can't um, enter into a contract from the Commonwealth of Virginia if you don't have the money in oh, the I bank. See. Okay, have so to you've got to have to have it in hand. So uh, we've ordered the first four statues, and then we hope to order before long the, the next, the other eight. Uh, and we have a uh, 
fundraising plan underway, uh, working to try to raise the money by the end of February next year. If we're able to do that, we should be able to have all of the statues ready for the dedication of the monument, which is to be in October of 2019. Which will be just after the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment giving women the right to vote. There you go. <laughs> I think your timing and your schedule's fantastic. And the 400th anniversary of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yes, that's correct. We are For, the... Well, of the founding of the House of Burgesses, Burgesses, of the first major infusion of women into the colonies, the first slave ship arriving in uh, Jamestown, and the first Thanksgiving was in 1619. So. Don't That's right, let you think it was in Massachusetts. Oh, well, you know, there's always the scene between Massachusetts and Virginia, that was, right? That was a year later. <laughs> I mean, Mary and Harvard and Jamestown and Plymouth Rock, he goes back and forth and back and forth. But I believe you, I'm a Virginian. I know in my heart. You know, that was actually one of the funny things about doing the DNA test. I got these for all my oh, kids yeah. for Christmas. Okay. Yep. But, you know, my family were French Huguenots. And so they came mm -hmm. here in the, uh, the 1700s. And so, so the DNA, Ancestry DNA, they actually tell you that you're in a group called the Earliest Settlers in Virginia. And I'm like, it's kind of nice to have that validation. That's a very nice thing. It's a nice thing. It's like, yeah, I always knew it, but it's nice to see science corroborate, yeah, my yeah. people were here. All right, got the proof now. Absolutely. That's good. <laughs> but, but I encourage people, and I hope our viewers will understand that this is an incredibly important monument, it's in their state's capital, it's on the grounds of the Capitol building itself, and that you're right, people might give $25, or they might give some small amount of money, but you will be helping to build an important and missing part of Virginia history. Right, something that's gonna be terribly educational and, and bring a lot of our history to life. And I just can't tell you how grateful we are for all those dollars and $25 and and whatever else somebody could afford to give because it's uh, such a great project and we want lots of Virginians to be part of it. I agree with that and I hope that people are marking October 2019 on their calendar for this dedication and understanding that the only way that dedication happens on schedule is if all of us work to find that final $800,000 to get the rest <laughs> of those statues built. Right, well I would say that 800000 is a lot of money but after we've raised $3 million, it's You're right. beginning to look like we might be able to do it. <laughs> to do it, I know. Yeah. So I hope our viewers um, are excited. You may not have heard about the Woman's Monument, Voices from the Garden, before today. But now that you know that this is under construction, that the ground has been broken, that the statues are in production, that you too can be part of helping to build and fund and create this missing part of women's history here in Virginia. And that is what you need to know.